Welcome back to uh, Broken Oars Indoors. It's that time of year again where we decide to share the wonder of our thoughts on indoor rowing. Now, um, two things. First of all, Aaron isn't with me today because he's not as obsessed with indoor rowing training plans as I am. Um, and secondly, and quite importantly, I'm advising you strongly. If you're listening to this on our standard podcast services, Click the link underneath the information, which will take you to YouTube and watch it because I'm doing this as a screencast because hopefully right now you are watching this and you are watching our indoor rowing training guide version two run through. Um, The whole idea of this little series is we're going to be going through what I'm calling the great training programs of our time. Uh, If you see me looking up just like that. Okay, I've actually got my script in front of me just there. Um, I can't talk this lucidly for this long. Um, And essentially the first one we're going through is this incredible document, the Indoor Rowing Training Guide version two. Not only is it a snapshot in sports science history, it's got a brilliant piece of gossip in the uh, initial acknowledgements. And um, it's genuinely, uh, so if you can see down here, this is a 253 page long document and um, it has a wealth of information on it. It has got some kind of good training programs. I'm not gonna say they're perfect. I'm gonna put a few caveats in when I'm talking about, but it otherwise it has an absolute wealth of information. It's no longer available on the concept2.co.uk website. Um, it used to be, part of the Concept2 UK website um, before Concept2 Limited, the company, was taken over by the mothership from the US. Um, It's essentially, it's a brilliant primer into endurance sports science, into uh, periodization of training, If you want to create a training program for yourself or others, it's a great place to start if you're new to coaching. Um, And it was given away for free and it's still free, preserved by the magic of the internet and the magic of Broken Oars uh, Google Drive. So we'll be again, including a link to this underneath the YouTube uh, screen. So you can just download it for yourself and have a look through and I heartily recommend it again there are a few caveats a lot of it is to do with its age and the vintage of the people who wrote it but let's start scrolling through it first thing to look at who came up with this um look at the little preface here um here we go read that this is not a substitute for medical advice any of the training that you do get doctor's advice on it standard thing so the two principal authors were Terry O'Neill and Alex Skelton. Terry O'Neill more or less has coached the highest level that you possibly can in this country. He was an Olympic rowing coach, an Olympic sculling coach um, back in the 1980s. He moved on slightly um, by the 1990s and he was working for Concept2 Limited by the turn of the millennium. And he then went on to writing this book Alex Skelton again um, a very very high level sports scientist and um, coach um, and involved with rowing since 1996 and works for the Notts County Rowing Association Celia and Keith Atkinson they've come up with some of the training programs in here um, both obviously ARA Gold Award, Amateur Rowing Association. This is kind of old. It's important you remember that. This is going back to 2002. This is going back to a time before, this is really important, before we actually came up with the concept of polarized training, which nearly all endurance training is moving towards now. Um, Then we've got Jürgen Grobler. Now, obviously, Jürgen is the most successful Olympic coach, certainly most successful Olympic rowing coach in the modern era of the Olympics. Um, 
and this was this was written kind of at the start and he's written about 15 pages on how he trains athletes and he's written um, in that we basically got his weight training plan which is included so this is Jürgen Grobler the most successful Olympic rowing coach of all time writing down for free how he trains people absolutely fantastic also a little bit of gossip here it turns out the reason that Jürgen Grobler came to the UK to coach rowing is because he was approached by the then concept two limited so the uk branch of concept two managing director so all those people who say ergs don't float this time concept two created the success if this is true concept two essentially is responsible for a large chunk of the success of the british rowing team since 1992 suck it on the water rowers um andy darling kurt jensen so look we've got physiologists we've got runners um we've got danish physiologists we'll go into those in a second we've got nutritionists so there's some basic nutrition advice really good uh we've got a runner okay so um this is um this is the guy who's right written the marathon rowing training program i wouldn't recommend it uh because i don't want to row a marathon but it's in there um we've got a sports psychologist with a few again this guy currently sells his time for about like a thousand pounds an hour if you want to hire chris shambrook to give you a psychology lecture and a load of bump to go with it on you know, from his current company, the, where is it? Where is it? It's right here. Uh, no, I don't know. Yeah, Head Start Performance. If if you want him to come and give you a lecture on performance psychology, it'll cost you about a thousand pounds an hour or part thereof. Okay. And literally he's written a 15 page advice guide on basic sports psychology for you to just pick up and use. Um, I'm, I'm going to kind of say that you, you can't beat value like that. Remember, it you just have to click the link. You can download this training program as a PDF. Uh, a lot of other people, I'm not going to go into those guys too much. Right. Okay, so just a quick run through of the contents. Um, basic exercise guidelines, warm-up, cool-down technique uh we'll skip over that because there are much better online technique resources with videos um and then we've got physiology pretty basic um but again it clearly defines things that you're going to hear about all the time as a rower so like in terms of heart rate bands in terms of stroke rates in terms of the intensity that you're meant to use uh, creating a bespoke training program I say well, this is almost advice for coaches rather than anything else. The preset programs, this is like the the key introduction um, or the, the, the key thing to this whole thing. If you want to learn how to row fast, these are your training programs. And it goes from basic conditioning, absolute beginner stuff, 20 and 40 minute fitness. Those are really good. Then there is a more intense version of the 20 and 40 minute fitness training program. And then there's the interactive race training program we also have the marathon training but i don't want to run a marathon if you do you can download and read for free it's brilliant 253 pages um section six cross training interesting useful um particularly if you're like a, a rugby coach or a football coach indoor rowing for games players indoor rowing for runners pretty useful this this is the next most important section here the weight training my word um i particularly recommend the alternative weight training method for rose by terry o'neill but this whole thing is a wealth of information obviously get the advice of a qualified uh strength and conditioning coach but 
just going through this, it's it's absolutely outstanding how much you le learn from this. Well, sorry, skip forward a bit. <sighs> bit on nutrition, it's worth it. It's not particularly in depth, but it's really worth looking at. And where are we? Then training considerations. This is brilliant. We're going to go into this. We're going to possibly spend a little bit more detail about it. But aging and performance, the menstrual cycle, uh, training during pregnancy, really, really useful information that you can't really find anywhere else in one place altogether. Um, I love this chapter, section 11. Section 12 has got some useful stuff in it. So without further ado, let's crack on. Okay, so this is, okay, th this is a really clear idea. This is going to take us into what you should do before exercise, you know, as in literally, if you have never exercised, what should you look at before you start an exercising program? It lists all these things. What is a warm-up? Why do we do a warm-up? What should a warm-up look like? How long should it be? Okay, it lists, it makes clear, this whole training program is so good at making clear things that are kind of just left unspoken. It's like, do a warm up, then do the session. Right, here we go, let's have a look at warm ups. Precisely what do they mean by doing a warm up? So it gives you five different types of session, UT2, UT1, AT, transition, and anaerobic. So uh, that's anaerobic threshold, transition, and AT. So kind of 5K pace, 2K pace, uh, 1K pace, basically. They basically say how long you warm up for, the intensity that you warm up at. I, I disagree with this. Twice your resting heart rate. For me, it's closer to two and a half times my resting heart rate. But I think that's kind of everybody's going to have to work that one out we'll talk about this whole twice your resting heart rate thing later but it defines precisely what a warm-up and a cool down is pre-competition warm-up this is basically this is my pre-competition warm-up 15 minutes four high intensity bursts of no more than 10 strokes per burst there you go what is a cool down that's what it is. It tells you, why do you do it? Reduces blood pooling in the muscles, which can lead to dizziness. Also limit the soreness experience in, in the muscles during the next day after strenuous exercise. Stretching, okay, why do we stretch? It takes all these things that kind of, oh, you should do some stretches afterwards. What stretches? Why do we do stretches? How do we do stretches? It tells you, warm up stretches, okay? Eight to 15 seconds, really quick. Cool down stretch. Stretches, 45 to 60 seconds, much longer. What stretches should you do? Here we go. It tells you with pictures, absolutely brilliant. It makes clear all the things that are not necessarily made clear before. Okay, I'm not going to go through what these stretches are, but they're all there. Right, section two, technique on the indoor row. As I said, there are much better places to get this from. Go to the British Rowing website. Um, you've got training tool. You've got dark horse rowing. You have row along John Stevenson's YouTube channel. Please look that up. It's a really, really great resource. Um, again, I'll go back to British Rowing's website and YouTube channel. Cover a hell of a lot of things. And they've got all the same information here. The technique. There's not a great deal of technique. You do the same thing over and over again. At some point, I might talk about the difference between long distance rowing, 2K rowing, and sprint rowing, but not right now. Um, technique on the indoor rower. Yeah, sorry, sorry, let's move on. A uh, few, here we go. Right, right, here you go. Um, the physiology section, again, it's really quite basic. Uh, we've got sort of 302, so this is 301. 
um, goes on to, so it's 12 pages, but again, it makes clear. So you will see, let's talk about your body, anaerobic systems, aerobic systems. You know, I, I don't know if this is GCSE level or A level sports science, but it's kind of, it's pretty basic stuff, but it's worth knowing about. If, if you're not like into biology, you're not into sports science, here you go. It tells you why we do the training that we do. It defines what VO2 max is. It defines what training does to your body. And then we start talking about training intensity, things you need to know. What is your resting heart rate? What is your maximum heart rate? What is the difference between the two, the heart rate range? We talk about the aerobic threshold, tricky to work out without uh, a lactate testing kit, and critically the anaerobic threshold and which it will actually tell you how to work out. So in section 12, there is, it tells you how to do the test. And these days it's immensely simple to do that test with a heart rate monitor and a, uh, so gets the words out in a second and a decent online rowing app. So just any, phone app, uh, boat coach, erg data two, erg zone, they'll all do it for you. They will all graph your effort and your heart rate. And essentially that's what you do. You can just, and you can work out that little inflection point right there. So, um, there we go. Training bands. Okay, now you need to understand what we mean by the training bands. These are what we talk about in rowing in Britain. So if you're given a training program which says 90 minutes UT2, what you mean is low stroke rate, 18 to 20, low percentage of your maximum heart rate, MHR, maximum heart rate, 55 to 70 beats a minute. Oh, no, 55 to 70%. So in my case, that is 95 to about 128. Um, and I'll train between 115 and 128 when I am doing my UT2 work. UT1, kind of falling out of favor. UT1, um, some people would describe it as black hole training. Um, this is what you can do, you know, for a hard, heavy half hour workout. It's also got stroke rates. Um, take the stroke rates with a pinch of salt. They are stroke rates designed for tall, long limbed rowers. If you need to go a bit high or a bit lower than those, don't worry too much. Your key indicator is your percentage of maximum heart rate anaerobic threshold this is your 5k pace the heart rate that you're going to have in the middle of 5k pace transition this is the heart rate that you're going to have in the middle of a 2k piece and anaerobic this is this is where you're going to be um as you say it's unsustainable this is your 1k your 800 meters your fly and die efforts um right physiology Neat little thing here about how much fat you burn, how much carbohydrate you burn, where do you want to be? Therefore, if you want to burn fat, down here. I mean, 65 to um, 75 beats per minute. This is an example for a 20 year old with a max heart rate of 200. These are really, really useful. Now, um, they've kind of got this a bit wrong because they said, what are the physiological tools? And well, you essentially you do a step test and then it starts talking about your estimated stroke volume, which isn't, it's not like a massive, you don't need to know your stroke volume. Okay, a cardiologist needs to know your stroke volume. Uh, estimation in VO2 max, not actually that important. Okay, it's a nice number to bandy around down at the rowing club, but honestly, not that important. What you need is, okay, your key physiological tools. You need to determine your max heart rate. You need to determine your resting heart rate. And you need to determine your heart rate 
at your anaerobic threshold and also your work rate at your anaerobic threshold. And you can do that by coming right down to section 12. Oh dear, oh dear. Drag fan the seconds. We'll, we'll come back to that in a second. Useful. Here we go. And this will tell you how to do a step test, a four minute step test. There are other ways of doing it. You can do a one minute step test if you want, but this is like your classic four minute step test. Um, so five lots of four minutes with 30 seconds rest in between. And essentially you take your heart rate, you take the power, you graph them out, you look for that inflection point. So here we go, if we look down here, straight line, straight line, straight line, inflection point. Okay, that is your heart rate and your pace at your anaerobic threshold. Um, and that is an immensely useful little thing to have. And it's, it's all there, it tells you exactly how you do it. Um, I'm gonna say that, okay, this is our drive, okay? If you find yourself on here, please don't delete all our things, but um, where are we? Here we go, come down, come down, come down. Dr. Evil's Rowing Library, that's where we store all our interesting little things. Now let's just bring this one back up. Mm -mm. Oh, I got this completely wrong. Ah, oh, sorry. Here we go. Hmm, where do we need to be? We need to be section four, creating a bespoke training program. Now, I don't think this is massively useful. Um, I think there's interesting information in there. I think it's more for a coach than for a rower. Or an indoor rower but the real problem with this okay is that again it's a product of its time you're creating a bespoke rowing training program that is periodized so briefly look at this periodization is it's not the fashion but the idea is that you're going to have a one year long plan and you're going to get to here we go. You're going to have your preparation phase, your pre-competition phase, your competition phase, and then a one month break. So essentially you're going to train for 48 weeks. And in each of these different phases, you're going to have different uh, focuses on your training. So preparation, very much endurance training, Pre-competitions like building your aerobic base and competition is sharpening that aerobic base. This is very much not the flavor of the month at the moment. We're looking at polarized training and this is the great weakness of this. And so unless you're really interested in this, I'd say skip it. Um, it's really good if you wanna make a a periodized training program. If you're kind of building towards Henley, do this. But otherwise, yeah, I wouldn't say it's the best. Um, again, it gives you this really good base of what is UT2, UT1, AT, transition and anaerobic work. Then personalizing your program. Um, I kind of feel that like two pages of this were sort of edited out because it was like, it gave away too much of the Danish program. So Kurt Jensen was the Olympic phys or the physiologist for the Olymp Danish Olympic rowing team. And I kind of feel that he decided he was giving too much away and say, take these pages out because you sort of read it and you get through here, you get through here. And then it's like, okay, we're, we're missing something here 
it, that's telling you how to make a training program from the information that you have. However, one very important thing it does do is give you these five tests, which arguably should be done at key points in the season. Max power output over 10 seconds, anaerobic capacity over 60 seconds, 2000 meter race pace, aerobic capacity, look at that, 30 to 34. You can tell he was dealing with <coughs> lightweights. Um, endurance over 60 minutes, aerobic capacity over 6,000 meters. I think, personally, every rower, even if they don't know precisely what these figures are, should have a very, very good idea of what these figures are. And it doesn't help. You don't have to do it like the Danes do in one week. You can do it over a period of time. You can do a maximum power output test and then just do a nice long row to recover from it pretty much the same with anaerobic capacity over six, 60 seconds you can then just kind of like you can just paddle it out for the next half an hour or something but you should really know this you should have in your head but preferably on a piece of paper or on an excel spreadsheet this graph don't worry about the w6 and w4 um here we go power you could have speed okay and then you have the amount of time you can sustain that power for. And that's a really, really useful little thing to have. Um, the rest of it, I, I don't know. I feel that there's stuff that he's like kind of taken out. Um, there we go. Then we get to the preset programs. This is the beating heart of this. This tells you these are the training programs that tell you how to row faster for 2000 meters or for a marathon again it's showing its age i not marathon rowing on the ergo used to be really popular now everybody's going for like 500 meters or 5000 meters or something um nobody really wants to do the marathon anymore and when you look at the training program you kind of see why it's a bit boring but Let's just talk through the programs here because I think they're really good. So firstly, program guidelines, um, it, it's more, you know, standard caveats. Consult your doctor. So basic conditioning. Um, I'd say this is probably way too complicated. It's just a very tra gentle training program. Um, that basically says, can you row five lots of one minute at your UT1 pace at 20 to 24 strokes per minute? And when you can do that, go on to doing that. And then go on to doing that. And then go on to stage four. And then come down to step two. And it's, um, yeah, so five, six, seven, eight, five times two minutes. Five times six times two minutes and, and you just go through and realistically after what's that six weeks you're going to be getting to the point where you can row 20 minutes ut2 until you're just you know in one go it's all good um i think it's it's the explanation is kind of complex this isn't the best one but then we get to the 20 minute and 40 minute fitness. Now these are actually pretty good. Um, 20 minute fitness, these are people with half an hour to spend. You'll spend 20 minutes on rowing machine plus or minus a warm up either side of it. So think of it as 30 minute fitness. Um, it tells you how to do this. So table 5.3, here you go, three to five sessions per week. It tells you what sessions to drop out, which will be sessions four and five. So if you don't have time, no, that didn't work, did it? Um, if you don't have time, don't do sessions four and five. Um, and it's a basic fast fitness. Now, it's a rolling fitness program. It doesn't come to a clear concluding point.
point. Now that has a real advantage for a lot of you guys out there who like to do different sort of events every month that you have to train through, whether that's Romania, whether that's Road Royalty, or any of these things that are springing up all over the place, um, the different challenges online or the CTC, um, all things I've done, but having a, so essentially, what is here is a nine week training program that revolves around you have an endurance phase you have what they're calling development period where you turn your endurance into a power output and then you sharpen that to produce your top end speed now again and you do that over nine weeks and then you repeat and you try and do each of these sessions a little faster than you did nine weeks ago now that i think again it's periodized rather than polarized it's not the it's not the uh flavor of the month for how we do endurance training but please remember endurance training has changed a lot and still seems to be training so polarized training may not be the final word in how you meant to train i'd say this is a good if you've got half an hour five times a week so your 150 minutes of exercise you could be doing a lot worse than following this training program to the letter go and buy yourself a heart rate monitor and nail it 40 minute fitness it's literally you're doing the same thing but you're doing it for longer again it's a really good training program you start out you know up here this is your endurance sessions you can do three sessions you can do five sessions you can do four sessions so endurance development where you're turning that speed in where you're turning that endurance into power and then consolidation where you turn i've done it again you, you you're really looking at the sequence Here we go. Let's bring this one down. Uh, wait, training gone too far. Marathon training. Oh, really? It just looks painful. It really does. Here we go. Up a bit. Up a bit. Okay. So interactive. Two thousand meter. No, a little bit further up. Um. And here we go, 40 minute training. If you're looking for fitness, if you're looking to just have a crack at different little competitions around the place, um, they're gonna be turning up every month, every other month, and you've only got 40 minutes, this is it. If you wanna push yourself a bit harder and go for a flat out 2000 meter training program, and again, you're faced with this idea of there is a certain you know, I don't, I, I can't say when I'm racing. I just want to have a cycle of nine weeks of training that gets me properly fit at the end of that cycle. This is the training program for you. So again, it's 4,000, uh, it's four sessions a week or five sessions a week or up to six sessions a week. Let's have a look at the six sessions a week because <laughs> This is genuinely really good, okay? Again, periodize three weeks on endurance. They're calling it pre-competition and competition. I like the, I like what they had up here on 40 minute. What is it? They called it development and consolidation. So here we go. It's endurance, first of all. Then you've got turning that endurance into a power output, a sustained power output, and then turning that power output into <coughs> two kilometer, 2K relevant speed. And to be honest, given the amount of like really kind of short, hard bursts you've got in here, like nine times one minute, 34 strokes a minute, absolutely brilliant stuff. Right, quick little break there. Just need a glass of water. Um, but yeah, I think this is a really, really good 
training program. Now, I want to bring something up here. This idea of the light, medium, and hard week. This is probably one of the best and most important things about this document for giving you a training plan. You are, one thing that I would say that endurance training doesn't really disagree on is the fact that you should vary the volume and intensity of your training every single excuse me every single week so you are cycling through different amounts of intensity and volume so essentially you can't just sustain a hard week every single week the idea is this is what is known as your functional overload and in your light week you're going to recover from that so have a look compare it's just like 2 times 20 UT1, 20 strokes per minute. 2 times 20 UT1, but at 24 strokes a minute. You're going to do that one harder, faster, and further. 1 times 32, 1 times 30 UT1 at 22 strokes a minute. 4 times 10 UT1 at 24 strokes a minute. So here you can be right at the top end of your UT1 range. Here you're going to be much lower down. You're also going to be doing 40 minutes here, 30 minutes there. One hour here, 30 minutes there. There's a really significant difference. And the this training program is better at differentiating between what is a light week, what is a medium week, and what is a hard week than anything else I'm going to be talking about really. So I'd recommend this. Now, if you're using this, again, there's this kind of idea that You've got preparation, pre-competition, and competition. You don't have to do it that way. You can go light week from there, medium week from here, and hard week from there. And then you can come back to the pre-competition, do that one there, and then the medium week from preparation, and then the light week. You can juggle it. You can take each one of these weeks, and you can slot them through. Um, so light week, medium week, and then light week, medium, and light, etc. Um, start them all in different places. <sighs> right, that's enough about that. Um, so if you want to be just ready for anything at any given time, there you go. Um, right now, this used to be the, essentially the jewel in the crown of the Concept2 website, which is the interactive 2000 meter training program, where essentially you would put your age, your weight, um, your level of training. So have you been training five days a week or more for three years? What they call athlete, fit, moderately fit, unfit or sedentary into machine and it would spit out a training program now first of all we come back here we've been talking about all these kind of like transition and ut1 and at is in there and all these things again what is so good about this training program is that it takes the mystery out of them. It doesn't say, oh yeah, UT2 is kind of like, can you hold a conversation while you're, you're paddling? Can you, can you do a load of cobblers? What you need to be able to do is know how fast should I be rowing? At what stroke rate? This tells you. So these, these training pace guides here, they log into this. Now, what are we gonna do? We're just gonna zoom in a bit here so we can see this. Right, so for instance, go and row a 2K. Again, the best predictive workout for rowing a 2K is to row a 2K. Um, and let's say we're gonna use this one here. We're gonna use me, give or take 624. Now, if I'm being given a 30 minute UT2 workout, um, so here we go, here's UT2, 
what that means I should be rowing it somewhere between 20 and 22 strokes a minute at 151 or above UT1 they've given you a stroke rate it's going to be between 146 and 151 AT between 140 and 146 transition so sorry anaerobic threshold okay that's the thing you find out the step test remember i showed you the graph transition 30 to 34 strokes a minute i think that's really high i'd probably be having out as like 28 to 32 but that's me i'm very tall and lanky um so you've got 130 sort of great less than or equal to 136 and this one you've got um, less than or equal to 133.5 for your anaerobic now I'm gonna put in some caveats on these guides this number here 151 that is absolutely the fastest you should ever row at on a UT2 long slow distance endurance based row you should really not be operating on the basis of this guidance you should be working on the basis of your heart rate or at the very least feel so to give you an idea my standard base building session is 52 minutes at two minutes at two minutes bet so two minutes per 500 meters in that i can pretty much stand up off that and i'm if i've had the fan on i'm not actually that sweaty okay i don't need to immediately go and have a shower i'm kind of sweaty but that should be your guidance you're not getting that sweaty you're not getting that out of breath you probably can't talk you can't hold a conversation because you have to entrain your breathing to the rhythm of the stroke but I'm going to say that remember these things are at the very top end of what you should be doing. So if we go back up, so if we have a look at this, a hard week. So here we go. The two by 20 UT one at 24 strokes a minute that there in your hard week, I should be doing that at 146. And that'll be a really hard workout for me. That'll be a long, hard distance workout. <laughs> okay, so there's that'd be my 146. However, let's come back. Let's have a look at a nice easy week. One by 60 UT2 at 18 strokes a minute. Okay. Two 159 to 201 would we'll be absolutely fine for that interpret this pace guide is really really useful and really helpful sorry about that guys um to have this but interpret it with caution anything else to say about that okay yeah essentially we're just going to scroll out a little bit okay so this is the training guide well no this is the Pace guide that I'd use. Um, so level four trained four to six sessions per week. If you want to do four sessions, cut out day one and day five. If you want to do five, cut out day five, I think. Again, light, medium, hard. Now, the idea behind this is that you are racing on the last day of the 26th week. So this is not a ro rolling training program. This is the Concept 2, 2,000 meter, you're gonna race at the British Indoor Rowing Championship as it was back then. You've been given a date, that's when you're gonna be going fastest. Everything's based around that. You don't one of the disadvantages of this is not really that easy to adapt the training program to anything outside of that one single goal you can throw other things in there that's fine but realistically 
if you're following this, you're not going to be in the best of shape at kind of like week nine to do a 750 meter piece for the CTC. Um, other things to look out for, you've got to remember this is based around the competition and pre-competition. So you've got competition starts at 14 to 26 weeks. This is when you start getting the really hard, fast, aggressive stuff coming in. Um, and, the, and that's just going to build all the way through. So look at it. It starts at four by one and a half minutes. And three weeks later, it's six by one and a half minutes. Three weeks later, it's eight by one and a half minutes. Um, come down here, it drops back again. Something else will have built up by that point. And then, you know, you you just got to go harder and faster and keep going. And then by the time you're getting to week 25, you're on to some kind of taper. Um, that also means that the first five weeks of this program, let's just bring this up. The first five weeks of this program are very much if you're going to do a year program, you're just going to be repeating the first five weeks of this program for 20 weeks before this starts, which is not that much fun. Um, it's fairly varied. You know, it's classic winter training here. You've got a lot of UT1, a lot of UT2. Um, you're doing some anaerobic threshold work. That's all good. Again, it's very much a periodized training. You've got your period of time where you're working on your endurance, then you're building power out of that, and that'll be from here down to 14. Um, and you start building in more transition work, and then you start building in the anaerobic work 12 weeks beforehand. That, again, this is periodized training, not polarized training. This is kind of out of fashion. Up here for the first, I'd say for the first kind of 13 weeks, it's fine. Once you start to get beyond this, once you start to get into your, your last 12 weeks of competition, I'd say you're going to be doing a lot more intensity than would be recommended by a modern endurance coach. You, you should be doing, I'd, I'd replace at least one of these days with like a really long, slow distance. You know, we've got six days and half of them are properly hard. So I would probably... On any given week, I'd probably be re replacing one or two of those with a long, slow distance. Very long, very slow. Here we go, four to five se sessions a week. Same thing, just smaller. Three, se three to four se sessions a week, you're moderately fit. And here's your sedentary, not exercise regularly in the past 12 months. Just having a crack builds up to a really good level of fitness. All right. Marathon training, going to ignore that. Uh, yeah, we're just going to go through that. It's so much, so much work on this. Right, just reset the zoom there. Keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down. Marathon training, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Here we go. Cross training. Um... I'm not going to discuss this particularly. Um, if you are a rugby or a football player, I'd say give it a read. It's got some inter interesting training programs. If you're a runner, give it a read. It's good for your knees. Take a break, train the upper body. Now, this is the one I want to get to because it's absolutely brilliant. This is weight training, okay? This tells you what movements to do in the gym, how much weight to use, and how to put those movements together into a weight training program for rowing and indoor rowing. It's brilliant. It's for free. 
Um, so you've got an introduction why we do it, st skill strength connection. Then it just gives you a series of 12 exercises. Excuse me. Twelve exercises, press, front curl, bent over rowing. You know, there's a lot here, um, but it's really useful. The jackknife crunch, that's advanced. Um, I think all the normal caveats apply. You should only be doing this with under the instruction of a strength and conditioning coach. Um, you should, you know, never train when ill or anything like that but here you go this tells you what how to put all these together over a over a year basically um general condition exercise one to ten maximum strength strength endurance it's all there so when you should do it transition and competition early preparation mid to late preparation pre and early competition <clears throat> or you have an alternative weight training method i use this at the point when i ended up pulling a pb um, as in my lifetime pb which i i do actually associate this training program with that pb so it's a 24 week rolling it doesn't really matter where you are. If, if you've been doing this for more than 24 weeks, you're going to be keeping the gains one way or another. Um, it tells you how to do all these things, how many circuits. The idea, it's endurance weight training, not so much strength weight training. Um, I'm not going to go through it in immense detail the way that I did with the online training program. I'm just going to say, look this up, look about out how you do it, and give it a go, follow it. Because I'm, I'm going to say the gains are immense. It's really good stuff. Look, it's a loading program. The whole thing is based around a single barbell, okay, that you can just have in front of you that weighs 20 to 30 kilograms, I'm not elite. Um, and you just do all the exercises, little notes um, about how you do it. And there you go, weight training for children and adolescents. They kind of say, don't. Um, this circuit is safe for prepubescent children and adolescents it should be done with little or no weights and focus on being good technique so hang on you know look two to five kilograms for children adolescents five to 15 kilograms that's barely kind of like an empty one inch bar so just a little bit of advice there Jürgen Grobler he basically tells you how he uh he trains people so, um, more or less, Jürgen Grobler's entire training philosophy is summed up in two paragraphs <laughs> um, with a bit of, bit of cross-training. Okay, let's go for three paragraphs, um, and that will that'll win you uh, the Olympics every single time. Passe. Um, so these are what he recommends for how you do your uh your training your so your strength and core stability there you go it tells you everything you need to do um your strength and endurance um again gives you all these different exercises and and then finally we come on to core stability training which is obviously very useful again it's this idea that oh you should do some core stability training well what does that involve well your coach probably doesn't have time to tell you so here we go here is core stability training it goes from level one the absolute basics then level two a bit further a bit more advanced to level three supermans and there you go. There's core stability training. 
hits right there. And it's all good. Right, then you've got the hour of pain. I'm not going to go into this, but it's basically doing six exercises, one after the other, until one hour is up or you fall over. But again, it's it's all based around a 20 kilogram bar. Anybody can have one of those. It's not expensive. It's not difficult to find. You require one piece of equipment, some space, and an hour. It's really, really useful. Um, this is a complete body weight circuit. Honestly, this whole thing, one of the most useful things in this whole thing, uh, in this whole training guide is the weight training section. Invest a little time in it, invest a little thought, take from it the things that you can use and become a better rower. Weight training, nutrition and weight management. Okay, so again, as I said, this is fairly basic, but please bear in mind it's the basics. There's no fad in here. There's no low carb, high fat. There's no Atkins diet. There's no grapefruit diet. There's no liquid diet. This is just fairly sensible by Marjorie T. Hagerman. Fairly sensible advice on what you're going to need as an example of getting of where you get your calories from it, it's absolutely classic it's just food pyramid stuff if you disagree with it fine um but it's there it gives you a really clean idea of what you should be eating uh lunch and dinner snacks all those things protein there you go and fat limit cheese consumption <clears throat> where do you get your vitamins and minerals from fruit and berries and vegetables again right so here we go fluid consumption it tells you roughly you know this has changed slightly there are some things here it says drink prior to feeling thirsty that's changed now that's definitely changed. So there's some things that you should ignore, but the basic idea of about 600 to one liter for every hour of exercise is fine. Don't go over that. Um, Pre-race meal. Again, it's, it's this idea, it's like, oh, get a good pre-race meal, your coach says to you. What does that mean? Well, here, this is what it means. Half pint of orange juice, one poached egg, two slices of toast with two tablespoons of jam, and half a pint of skim milk. Bosh. Advice on controlling and losing weight. Very simple. Um, these guys I won't go into because this is advice for how to be a lightweight rower. And as we know, I'm a heavyweight supremacist. Now, weight management gives you a nice big nine week, no, 12 week low intensity training program designed to burn fat. Now, some people, again, would disagree with this. They say you should probably stick more high intensity in there. But if you are looking to lose body fat and you don't have a particularly big aerobic or sporting background, you could do a lot worse than just take on the advice of this training program and run through it for 12 weeks. And if you get to that 90 minutes of UT2 at the end, you're probably gonna find that you're a lot slimmer and a lot fitter than you were 12 weeks previously. Right, sports psychology. Chris Shambrook is a very, very successful sport and performance psychologist. He has his own company. Um, it will cost you a small fortune to hire him. And here he is who's written, 
I'm just going to scroll through and find out how many pages he's written. Um, there we go. 13 pages of basic sports psychology for your delectation. He's got two kind of uh, two or three of these little sheets that you can just copy out, which detail psychological training of yourself as a RAR. To be honest, it's really, really good stuff. You won't get it for no money anywhere else. You know, it's the standard stuff. Set goals. Here we go. Here we go. Set goals. Make sure your goals are real realistic. Accept a lack of smooth progress. Um, measure your progress and think about what you're doing and review what you're doing. So here we go. Date, start the season, current aims, long-term aids, progress so far. Training focus, where are we at? What are we doing? Are we happy? Uh, concentration tips on the end of rower. Ideal race plan, okay? Write it down, think about it. Create a plan, stick to the plan, execute the plan. There you go, he, he's literally, he's giving you this thing to write down your race plan on, it's great. Um, and then you've got a race review system. All these things are just for free and they're all something that you can take and use if you think it's gonna make you a better athlete. So there we go, right. Now, this one I love, training considerations. Excuse me a second. So what we've got here, first of all, a little bit of stuff about aging and performance, slightly depressing, certainly for a man of my age. Um, obviously, it gives you advice on how you're meant to deal with this, a positive state of mind. <laughs> that always helps when you're growing old. Um, but we talk about strength and muscle mass decline. We talk about VO2 max de decline, sort of like the decline of the cardiovascular system and the respiratory changes. This is all essential for managing your training as you grow older. Read it, you know. Um, mentally important. Training, performance, and the menstrual cycle. These guys have really put a lot of thought into this. How many training programs have you seen in the past five years where they've given you advice on how to sync your menstrual cycle into your training program and how, how, how to take that on board? Um, here, and again, this is like really advanced stuff. Um, that you'd normally only get if you are hiring your own sports doctor. But here you go. It gives you the basics. It gives you the effects of the, um, the hormones that the menstrual, cy menstrual, uh, menstrual cycle is based on, uh, luteinizing hormone, follicinating hormone, um, and the effects of... Um, progesterone and estrogen on the cardiovascular system, things like that. Um, and essentially, it gives some advice on manipulation of the menstrual cycle. I would strongly suggest you only talk about that with an experienced sports doctor. Um, one paragraph is not really enough. There's caveat over, but still interesting starting point. Training during pregnancy. Right, so again, when was the last time you just had a training guide that talked about, right, how are you gonna keep your training going through pregnancy? Um, risk of exercise, um, here we go. General guidelines. <coughs> Don't change things. Exhaustive exercise should be avo avoided. Um, 
lack of clear scientific evidence relying on high exercise intensities and further research is needed. Well, further research has been done, not least of which by my wife, um, and there are some pretty good guides out there now um, coming out through doctors via the General Medical Council and through your health visitor, but they can be found. Um, there you go. Indoor runner. Um, okay, here we go. Important things to discuss. Warning signs. Seek medical advice immediately. Post delivery. There's a hell of a lot more information on this now than there was back then. Again, my wife collated a lot of it. So, um, this is something to look up, but this is a really good start point. Right, adaptive rowing. They don't they don't say a great deal about this. They just give you an address. I was possibly hoping for more. But okay, section eleven, love this one. How much time have we got? Stay with me that long. Um training interruption. <coughs> Illness, injury, holiday. Okay, how to manage these things. So here we go. We've got <laughs> three circuits. Uh, you've got your bedroom circuit. You've got your body O8 circuit, which you don't want to do in the bedroom because the people below you will think you're going nuts and call the police because it involves lots of burpees. And you've got a lower body circuit, which is lunges, burpees, etc. Um, I think this is, you know, again, this is really useful. Um, and then you've got, um, you know, it's great. Uh, you've, you've got a, uh, circuit of body weight exercises for the upper body. Uh, keep going, keep going. Right. Frequently asked questions on injuries. Um, I kind of hope there was like slightly more on injuries on this one. And then finally, here we go. The baseline test and the step test. Um, so here we go, anaerobic capacity test. He's going for 20 seconds instead of like the Danish method, one minute, maximum power test, five strokes instead of 10 strokes. Um, they say the step test for competitors only. Um, it is very de demanding, but it's also the thing that gives you your maximum heart rate and I'd recommend doing this for most people. It will give you your maximum heart rate and your anaerobic threshold, all of which are fantastically useful. Then, so we're gonna scroll down. Scroll down. I'm gonna let you read that. I'm not gonna interpret these things frequently asked. Right, now, this will give you a very, very clear idea of the age of this. The appendix details what is going on with the PM2 and the PM2 plus performance monitor. Guys, is literally before the PM3. This is this is an old piece of information. Lots of it's really good, lots of it's still really relevant. I still recommend a lot of the training programs, but I'm gonna say take it with a full, you know. The caveats do exist. This is quite an old document. So scrolling through this, here we go. Recommended drag factor settings. Do you know what you're meant to be, your drag factor is? No? Okay, there you go. It tells you. <laughs> um, heavyweight men, performance athletes, 140. Um, I can't count myself these days as a, as a junior man. Obviously, there are gonna be difference for the sprinters and all these things. A lot of this is very different these days. So these days, the heavyweight men, I think, are around about 128, 125. Um, it's gone down. People are aiming on rating up rather than pulling harder. Splits, uh, split time to watts conversion. Um, absolutely love the way that two minutes and 200 watts just slots in nicely together. Pace guide, here we go. 
how long is a 500 meter race, 5,000 meter going to take at 138, 16 minutes 20? Tells you everything. Weight adjustment factor, more or less useful, interesting. Decide that's more for a coach than for you. Training log. Incentives, ah yeah, forget about the incentives. You only get them in other countries, I think. Age category is a little bit more than we need. Personalizing your program, the Danish program. It's there, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you do with it. I don't know how you make a a training program. Really, from that uh, content to profile, ideal race plan, race review system, right glossary of terms. Look, it's got a glossary, and then you okay. It's got. It's got, here we go, Tudor Bomper, the periodization of training for sports, programs for peak strength in 35 minutes. Um, that's basically an absolute classic of sports science literature. Um, everything is here. A huge amount of time, money, and effort has gone into this. And I would say that I recommend everybody downloads this. The link is attached. Um, we will make that link public and you can then take from it what you will. It's, it is almost, almost a reference work. It's not quite a textbook, but there's a lot of little things in there that you can go away and take some advice and use it. It's got some good training programs in there. Again, I've given you all the warnings of this is a product of its time rather than simply a um, I'm sorry, I've completely lost my train of thought. It's a product of its time rather than the latest thing, but I don't know of any free source of information out there that gives you as much in one place. Um, so yeah, trust this, but verify. Thank you very much. This has been the first in the series of great training programs of our time. And I am recommending to you the Concept2 Limited Indoor Rowing Training Guide version 2, a free resource to be found through Google or our Google Drive site. Click the link below. Thank you very much, people. Bye.